I'm Ruth Buzzy. You might remember me from Rowan and Martin's Laughing, the Dean Martin Roast, Sonny and Cher, Donnie and Marie, the Carol Burnett Show, and hundreds of other TV shows and movies over the years. I turned 84 in July. Being this age is probably easier for me because I've been playing an old lady since I was in my 30s, beginning with my famous character Gladys, who beat up Artie Johnson, plus a lot of other famous people, including Muhammad Ali with her purse. Oh, I was very fortunate to work during what I would consider the golden age of entertainment. I did shows with Bob Hope, Red Skelton, John Wayne, Lucille Ball, Jim Neighbors, Dom DeLuise, Johnny Carson, Ringo Starr, and just about everyone I ever hoped to meet. People we all considered legends. Dom DeLuise was my first comedy partner on television years before laughing, doing a crazy magic act. He played a magician and I was his bumbling sidekick, Shakuntala. After that, I was in a big Broadway musical called Sweet Charity, directed by Bob Fosse and starring his beautiful wife, Gwen Verdon. I would have been satisfied with that as the pinnacle of my career because it was so wonderful being on Broadway after performing in little clubs and, and, and working my way up. Oh. But the biggest surprise of all was when I was suddenly hired for Rowan and Martin's Laughing. I had to get out of my Broadway contract and moved to Hollywood in 1967. I bought a beautiful split-level Spanish-style house on a wooded acre in the Hollywood Hills for $67,000, which was a huge amount of money for a house in 1967. Nowadays, in the Hollywood Hills, that wouldn't even re remodel a bathroom. Oh, dear. I love my home and my work. It was a dream job for an actress. I love going to the studio. Can you imagine working every day with Lily Tomlin, Goldie Hawn, Joanne Worley, and all the other fabulous cast members? Plus our guest stars were a, a true who's who. We received our scripts over the weekend and had our first read through of the comedy material on Tuesdays rehearsed on Wednesdays and Thursdays, made changes, <laughs> made changes and added punchlines. It was a riot. We had the absolute best writers in showbiz and I think the greatest variety cast. Best costumes from Bob Maggie and Rhett Turner and the absolute best pr producer in the world, George Schlaughter. I have to mention George here because if he ever saw this and he didn't get mentioned, he'd die of a heart attack on the spot. Hi, Joss. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> we taped our shows before live audiences every Friday. They were edited and on the air in NBC's Living Color the following Monday night. We had the number one show in our time slot for the whole five and a half years. During that show and afterwards, I guest starred on TV specials with everyone from Glenn Campbell, Jerry Lee Lewis, The Monkees, Jonathan Winters, and The Beach Boys to the Bee Gees, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis, Frank Sinatra, Anne Murray, and also I performed more than two dozen motion pictures. Those specials were so much fun to do. Many of them are still out there on YouTube. My career spanned more than 50 years and gave me five Emmy nominations and a permanent place in the Hollywood Television Hall of Fame and got me a Golden Globe Award in 1972 for Best Supporting Actress on Television. But more important are the tremendous memories I have 
from working with and knowing the greatest people in show business. Jim Neighbors and I did a TV show for children called The Lost Saucer for a couple of years, and we became lifelong friends, just like sister and brother. Dom DeLuise, his wife and children, were also just like my family. Oh, and I miss both Jim and Dom very, very much. Lucia Ball took me under her wing. She gave me great advice as a young entertainer and asked me to guest star on her show several times. She also took me on a ski trip with her family and made me feel like I was among her best friends. In the mid 70s, I was going through a divorce and just before the first Christmas when I would have been home all alone, Frank Sinatra called me and said he wanted me to spend the Christmas weekend with him and his family in Palm Springs. We had a wonderful Christmas and I'll never forget that. I was so blessed to have also known Dean Martin. I worked with him quite a bit over the years. Dean treated me like a little sister. I loved doing his TV specials. The Dean Martin music and the comedy hour and the Dean Martin celebrity roast from Las Vegas. Dean never came to rehearsals at all. He wanted to see the material when it was brand new to him for the very first time when he was actually on stage performing. This required him to read cue cards. When the material was exceptionally funny, <laughs> as it often was, Dean would sometimes get so hysterical laughing that he could barely read his lines. That made the shows even more entertaining. He thoroughly enjoyed every moment of it. He was an exceptionally talented actor. Filming the Dean Martin show, we would work until about noon, and then the director would yell, cut, lunch break, back on set in one hour. The cast and crew would then go to the dining room for lunch. But when I was on the show, Dean would come and get me by the hand and lead me back to his dressing room where they brought our lunch to us. And we would just sit in his room and talk and have our lunches together. He wanted to hear all about how my life was going, who I had worked with recently, and what we did. The thing I found most interesting about both Sinatra and Dean was when you spoke to these guys they made you feel like the most important person in the world. Maybe it's one of the secrets that made their careers climb straight to the top. The really greatest, the biggest entertainers of all times had the most humble and sweetest attitudes. That was also true of John Wayne, who loved working on a comedy show. Whenever he was near our studio in Burbank, he would find time to drop by and just walk onto the set. He would just sit in the audience and enjoy the taping of our shows. I think that's how he originally got on Rowan and Martin Flappin, because our producer, George Slaughter, never missed an opportunity to have a big celebrity on the show. I loved him so much, it was hard to beat him with my purse, <laughs> but I did it and he loved it. A few years ago, I finally retired from show business. My husband sold his business in Los Angeles and we moved to Texas. My husband and I live about an hour southwest of Fort Worth on a section of land with houses, cows, dogs, cats, and lots of beautiful wildlife that we feed but don't hunt. I'm grateful for all the opportunities I've had and very, very glad to still be enjoying life. Lots of love to you from me, NBC's geriatric sex symbol, Ruth Buzzy.